indoor and outdoor TV options, choosing the best TV for you, mounting the TV, four options for TV service, projectors and screens for camping, using a bullet journal for TV while RV camping, all of that and much more on this week's episode of the Soul RV Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode seven of the Soul RV Podcast. I am Mark. And I am Angie with Soul RV. Like Mark mentioned, we are going to discuss how to easily get TV in your RV with the best TVs, mounts, projectors, and screens. This is something we struggled with for years of RV camping. Although TV is not a necessity while camping, it is very handy to have when the weather is less than desirable. So let's get started with indoor and outdoor TV options. There are many reasons for needing a new TV in your RV. Maybe you just bought a new to you RV and it didn't come with any TVs. Maybe you bought a brand new RV and realized that it didn't come with a TV in a bedroom or you'd like to upgrade your TV. Maybe you, like me, really want to add a TV to your outdoor entertainment area so you can watch the game while barbecuing or cooking some breakfast. Mm -hmm. Whatever the reason for needing a new TV, we've got you covered with how to easily get TV in your RV. Mm -hmm. It is time for TNT. Tip number one is what to do before you begin the process of purchasing a new TV or mount for your RV. Consider the location that you need a new TV. Next, consider the area where you will be placing that new TV and measure it. Finally, you need to think about what service you will be using so you know what options you will need with your new TV for your RV. Tip number two is answering another question for your needs. You need to think about the options that you want or need for an RV TV. There are smart TVs that allow you to do so much more. However, is that something you really need or more importantly, something that you can actually use in an RV without Wi-Fi? Right. Choosing the best TV for you and your family's needs can be a little overwhelming. When you head out to the store or online to search, you will find many, many brands and sizes. Like Mark said, there are smart TVs and all the different options you have within those. So, do you need a smart TV in your RV? This will be determined by what service you plan to use. What resolution are you looking for in your new TV? Do you have a preference of LCD, LED, Blu-ray, or plasma? Have I lost you there yet? Our son Aiden has some visual impairments and that definitely goes into our thought process whenever we're looking for a new TV. Also consider the price you are wanting or willing to spend. TVs run anywhere from a couple hundred to thousands of dollars. Having an idea of what you are willing to spend is good before you head out shopping so you don't overspend. We chose to go with the TCL brand TVs for our RVs. We have purchased many TVs in this brand, not only in our RVs, but also at home. We have a few 28 inch, 32 inch, as well as our main travel trailer TV is a 55 inch 4K smart LED Roku TCL brand TV. The reason we chose TCL brand TVs is because they are absolutely hands down the most cost effective TV on the market right now with so many options. And now it's time for solely facts and current events. This week's solely fact is that in years past, there have been anywhere from 750,000 to a million people, mostly in RVs, attending the Quartzsite Annual RV Show in Arizona. Wow. This week's solely current event is that the Quartzsite 37th Annual Sports Vacation and RV Show is the first RV show of 2021. It will take place on January 16th and runs through January 24th. Like Mark said earlier, it is a very large event and is now known as the largest gathering of RVers in the world. The Quartzsite RV Show website states that they will be following the pandemic guidelines for safety, but are asking people, if possible, to avoid opening day and to attend during the week to avoid long waits to enter. The Quartzsite Show will feature many of the latest gadgets and technology, including RV solar products, RV appliances, information on RV insurance and rallies and caravans. 
generators, flat tow systems, and many other RV accessories. Selecting a TV mount is the easier side of purchasing TV accessories for your RV. If you know the size of your TV, the only other thing that you need to decide is if you want an articulating arm, tilting ability, or if you just want it to mount in a solid location. Also double check that the mount lists your brand of TV for the sizing of the actual back for it to mount. Most are universal. One especially important point I want to stress is for you to look up the RV owner's manual, how to mount a TV on your specific RV walls. If you're not sure how to do that correctly and safely, just make sure it's mounted into an RV manufactured design stud on the wall. If you purchased an RV, it will normally contain a sticker or a wall plate stating where the stud is for a mount. Mm -hmm. And you've probably seen those a lot on those new RVs. They yep. have those stickers. We chose the mounted RV TV mount for our RVs. We really like this mount because it is designed specifically for RVs mm -hmm. and it comes with two wall plates. This allows you to mount them in two different locations and transfer one TV back and forth between the locations. For example, you could install one plate in the bedroom and install the other wall plate on an exterior entertainment area of your RV and use only one TV and transfer them back and forth where you need them at any given time. And we did that when we first got our travel trailer. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. Additionally, we like that you can easily take the TV off of the mount. If you have any concerns about traveling, you can take it off mm -hmm. and not have it bouncing around Which on I, the wall. Yeah, I have concerns about that myself, so I'm, I'm glad that we did that. And now, it is time for Life and Soul of the Party. Last week, we had two questions. The first was, what are the top three states for selling the most RVs? The answer is Indiana number one, California second, and Texas is third. The second question that we asked was, what is the safest RV to drive? That answer would be a Class B motorhome or van. Not surprising at all, really. Nope, usually the smallest of all. Right. The question for this week is, what percentage of RVs are built in Indiana? The second question of the week is, what is the average age range of RV owners these days? We'll be answering those questions coming up in our next podcast. There are four options that you have. Well, maybe five if you're one of those people who have no desire to have a TV in your camper. But <laughs> we're not going to discuss those that don't like glamping per se. Uh, just but because that's okay. you're camping. That's okay. Yep, you know? that, it's okay to not want any of those amenities and that's right. get technology it's away from the camping. camper. Yep. <laughs> Then again, you probably wouldn't be tuning into this episode to hear what we have to say if you are one of those. So we're just going to focus on the four <laughs> options of TV for your RV. Mm -hmm. Those four options are a digital antenna, a cable service, satellite TV, or streaming to your TV. I will cover the first three of those while Angie will cover the fourth, a digital antenna. This is what your RV came with. It's usually located on the roof of your RV. We'll need to be cranked up on some of the older models. The newer ones like on our uh, Flagstaff have like a Batman wing on top, almost looks like a stealth bomber. <laughs> um, it does rotate to try and pick up a signal better, but it is not raise up or down. OmniGo actually has a really good portable RV HD outdoor antenna. Mm -hmm. This is a good alternative if your older camper antenna isn't working anymore or if you just want an antenna for outside because there's not a jack that is actually available outside from the internal antenna. One bad side about that is it does require a 12 volt power source though. Cable service. I have personally never used this option so I don't have any experience with it. Generally speaking, you will find this option when you're in a long-term camping location. Or a resort. Or a resort. With cable service, it requires a receiver as well, but it's not something you can travel with because all parks aren't gonna have the same cable provider. Satellite, you have two different options. The two that we're gonna focus on is Direct TV and Dish Network. These are an antenna and receiver based programming. 
On the receiver, you will need to see what works for you, whether you want a DVR or don't need a DVR. You have different antennas themselves. You can get in-motion antennas that will go to the roof. You can get solid antennas that aren't in motion for the roof. Or you can just set them out on the side of the camper in the grass on a level area. And you can have pedestal mounts for them. They do have self-tracking ones for when you're out camping that it's just set it up and go. Or you have the manual style that you actually have to tune into. That is not a really good option for most people because tuning them in at some parks can be a real nightmare. Mm -hmm. uh, but those two are the two options that you have for satellite TV. The fourth is streaming, and I'll turn it over to Angie for that. For many years, we had been trying different ways to gain access to satellite TV while camping. We began using our subscription to Dish Network, added on an additional satellite and receiver, and could record one show while watching the same show on a separate drive. That worked all right for us, but we really wanted to access our home DVR. We also wanted to access Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Prime videos. We have a smart TV in our RV, but what is the point, honestly? If you don't have Wi-Fi available, you can't access it anyway. I watched all the posts on Facebook that I could find from different pages for RV camping and glamping, but everyone kept saying nothing worked correctly for them to stream from their iPhone or iPad to the main RV TV without using their hotspot. I'm okay with using data from my Sprint phone because it is unlimited. However, I will not use my hotspot for TV. We can't use the hotspot because it is not unlimited. No, it is not. Well, we were out camping, and I had talked this over with my dad quite a bit, telling him there has to be a way. A little later, while we were each hanging out in our own RVs, I got a call from my dad, and he says he thinks he found something that will work. I kept telling him that all these people on Facebook sites said there was no way to do it. It would take up all of our hotspot. Well, guess what, guys? Father knows best. He found it. It does work. It works with Netflix and Dish Network, meaning we can now access our DVR from home. So we decided to try it out with Hulu and Amazon Prime Video, and yes, it works with them too. This simple little device that makes our world a whole lot easier to watch TV while RV camping is the Apple Lightning to Digital AV Adapter. We have full detailed instructions on how to set up a device for streaming TV while RV camping on our website. That link is also provided in this episode description. If you plan to be a little lazy like we are on those rainy days, you might as well go all out and get the 25-foot HDMI cable that will make it easier to go from your RV TV to your phone or your iPad and to your hand on the recliner. Our iPhone chargers weren't working the greatest, so we went ahead and purchased those new too. And we really like the cords because those cell phone charger cords are nylon. The sole goal. The sole goal is where we discuss how to make your travel goals and where to go, including stories of our own travels. This week we are going to share a little about our travels that we did around this time last year. This journey was taken to Eisenhower State Park at Melvern Lake in Kansas. We had seen on the Weather Channel that Kansas was supposed to be in the 50s, it was probably the low 50s I think, in January for a few days. That kind of weather does not tend to happen very often. so. We decided to take another trip in the Soulmobile, our newly purchased and remodeled Class C motorhome. After all, this was exactly why we purchased the second RV, so we could get out in the winter months. We made a call to make reservations because you know me and needing to know we had somewhere to stay when we arrived at night. We were told that there was not anybody out there camping so we could pick our own site and didn't need to make reservations. Surprise, surprise, it's January in Kansas. Unfortunately, we got a late start on that Friday evening, and we did not arrive until after 8 p.m. It was dark. It was so dark. We got a lesson there about parking in the dark for sure. We picked our campsite based solely on what we had seen on the map because this was the first time that we had actually been to the state park to camp. I knew by the map that we would be close to the lake, but that did not prepare me for what I saw the next morning. It was a breathtaking view. My words to Mark were, you don't want to sleep another minute. You really want to get up and see this. Out the front door of the motorhome was this amazing view of the lake, a beautiful mm -hmm. sunrise that I have no words to describe, and the wind turbines right. in the background. Right. If you've read about our first trip to Western Kansas and this motorhome that we took a few weeks before this trip, then you know about Aiden's and Mark's love for those wind turbines. 
we were actually a little surprised to see how many boats were on the water in January. Quite a mm -hmm. bit of fishermen, but they were definitely out there. The wildlife was probably my favorite memory from this journey. We saw a large flock of pelicans in Kansas. They circled the lake and then landed right in front of us on the water. One really interesting part about that trip was when we were leaving, we were ready to pay, not knowing that the actual pay station was completely closed. Right. So if you're going to go, make sure and do your checking on it, have cash in hand to put in an envelope and pay for those mm -hmm. nights. We didn't take any cash with us because we generally don't carry any. Mm -hmm. So I ended up having to call the actual state park main office and let them know where we stayed and had them tally it yeah. up and pay for it. You did that that we, next mon Monday morning. We did. We didn't want to leave without paying and right. there wasn't anybody around. So sure. it was a little interesting new thing for us. But that's why uh, maybe you check during the week and get all that lined out before a weekend and you have to leave before anyone is monitoring the gatehouse or anything. Right. But, you know, they were okay with us doing it that way and they appreciated our honesty. Yeah, they didn't expect someone to actually call in to pay. They just figured they'd get away with it, which we're not going to do. No. Well, this was one of the most relaxing trips we have taken, and I am thrilled to say that we had no crazy events this trip. Projectors and screens for camping. If you want to have an actual movie night while out camping, if you've got some young ones and you want to have them bring their friends over, there are some really cool options for actually portable video projectors as well as screens. We have a blow up screen that we use, works really well, anchors down, have all the kids over, watch it, or as in our case, we have all the adults watch it. <laughs> the projector that we chose is a smartphone projector, Vamvo mini portable video projector, works really well. You wanna keep in mind how old your kids are. If they have a curfew of eight or nine and have to be in the campsite or in bed, probably not the best thing to get. These only work in a full dark scenario. It's not going to start at 8.30 with the light out. You know, it really does need to be dark out. Mm. Projectors are just made that way. Sure. Unless you have a really high dollar projector, which while camping, I'm not going to take a no. thousand dollar projector. It's going to no. be a little cheap, <laughs> cheap one there, but it can still be fun. The screen that we actually use is a Von House 80 inch uh, projection screen with the manual pull down. Food for the soul. <laughs> On this week's segment of Food for the Soul, we have a super simple recipe for cooking in a crock pot at any time while RV camping or at home. This is one of the recipes that we feature on our crock pot cheating while RV camping series. This recipe is for crock pot Philly cheese steak sandwiches. And they are great. They are. Mark and I love the Philly cheese steak sandwiches that we get from our favorite takeout establishment, Chartreuse Caboose. Therefore, I knew that trying to find just the right ingredients to create our own would be difficult. Additionally, I had to find a way to make it in the crock pot because I'm kind of lazy sometimes. I knew I had a challenge ahead of me. Finally, here is what I came up with that worked like a charm the first time. Philly cheese steak ingredients. Two 12 ounce packages of Gary's Quick Steak pre-sliced sirloin beef for Philly steak. A quarter bottle of Johnny's French Dip Azu concentrated sauce, two ounces. A few sprinkles of Orrington's Farm Restaurant style Azu mix. Eight slices of provolone cheese, half an onion chopped if desired. We actually didn't use the onions in ours because I don't really care for onions. One green bell pepper if desired, and eight sandwich rolls or hoagie buns. The instructions for that is you add all the beef to the crock pot. You pour two ounces of that Johnny's French Dip Azu sauce on top of the meat. Sprinkle some of the Orrington Farms Azu mix on top of that and mix it well. You add in your chopped green bell peppers and or onions if desired, and you cook it in the crock pot for four hours on low. Then you load up the sandwich rolls with your condiments of choice. If you camp as often and as long as we do, the weather isn't always ideal for being outside. After you have played every board game in the RV, sometimes you just want to have some downtime and relax and watch TV. That is when using a bullet journal TV series tracker while RV camping can come in handy. I explained to other RVers that the main reason we use the bullet journal TV series tracker is based on a scenario 
we were in. Our family decided to sit down and relax after getting everything set up on our campsite and realizing it was way too hot to be outside and we just needed to relax. We pulled up the DVR on the TV using the handy device that allows you to do so without using your hotspot that we talked about earlier and that is when we realized something is wrong with the DVR. Some of our shows were missed. We start questioning, did they not record properly? We really think we may be missing a few episodes but not sure where we had left off. Or maybe you were binge watching your new TV show on Netflix that has many seasons and episodes within those seasons and you're not sure the last episode you watched. That is where the bullet journal for TV while RV camping comes in handy. This handy sheet you can print out free on our website and we'll include that in the episode description. A bullet journal is a grid-like form that you simply enter updated information into. It has a column for the show title, the length of the show, the day and time it airs, and a place to fill in what season and episode you are up to. And finally, where that show is aired, such as Netflix, Hulu, or Amazon Prime. Then you simply check off each episode you've watched to keep track of where you are in the series. It's that simple. That is it for today's episode of the Soul RV Podcast. We hope that we have answered your questions about how to easily get TV in your RV with the best TV mounts, projectors, and screens. Coming up on next week's Soul RV Podcast is all about the 2021 RVs in the Midwest. Thanks so much for joining us today. As always, Soul RV encourages you to safely get out and live and explore the world around you. If you'd like to check out our show notes from today's episode, just go over to soulrv.com, click underneath podcast, and make sure you follow us on social media and be sure to hit that subscribe button below.